The message is simple to the light heavy contenders. I'm here, I'm back. Ghana born, Croydon raised, Joshua Buatsi is one of the highest ranked light heavyweights in the world today. Former Olympic bronze medalist, a stoic figure outside the ring, and a ruthless finisher inside. Recently moving under a new promotional banner, he's ready for world honours. But one man stands in his way. You mentioned British light heavyweight, my name better come up now. Dan Aziz had a different path into boxing. The Lewisham fighter has taken the scenic route, being the only British light heavyweight to capture all domestic titles on his way to a number two ranking. Come on, and the new baby! Friend turned foe and long-time sparring partner of Boazzi, Lewisham native Dan Aziz is a true throwback fighter. Dan Aziz totally dominant now and keeps his unbeaten record intact. Overlooked and cast aside by promoters, Aziz created a storm on a small circuit to build his reputation as someone who can be avoided no more. What a performance from Super Dan Aziz! Put as easy, like, as easy, like, yeah. <laughs> Waxy's back, baby. Let's go. Welcome to Boxer. This is Paths Collide. Boatsy Aziz. Well, what is the next next aim for you? Well, Do you want to get out there as quickly as possible again? I said to Ben, I'm going back to the States in two weeks, so make something happen. He said we'll meet before that, so that's all I know. Who's on your hit list, though? I want a big fight, man. Well, I met him in New York, and he struck me as a very nice, humble uh, young man, very respectful and things, and that's the first thing that I look for in a fighter. Whatever clip you do, you big up my guy. It's his birthday today. Jeff helped you come a long way, bro. And by him being a bronze medalist, that let me know that he had good competition in the amateurs, and he progressed to the Olympics and won a bronze medal. So it lets me know that he was a winner, even though he started at 15, 16 years old. And um, we got together at the right time, I believe. I think he's got a huge upside. That's the beauty of it, because he started, uh, I think, at 15, 16 years old. So he's not a, a burnout fighter, and he's got a huge upside. Uh, he's a very powerful puncher, and he's got good instincts for landing power punches. So I'm just trying to refine some things so he'll learn how to set things up better. But I like his upside. He's got a lot more that he could progress on. Father, we pray for strength, we pray for unity, we pray for ability and agility. We call upon the God that answered by fire. May the nations of the world see what God has been doing in secret, O oh God. There's the shots. Stiff jabs, constantly snapping your head back. I think it's been a good start from Boatsy. He just left those hands go nice and loose, nice and fast. It's his type of fight. Very controlled and measured by Boatsy. You know, he's comfortable. Yeah, good lead right hand. Nice body shot. Got it round the back of the elbow there. That was a good shot for Boatsy. Well, there's been lots of talk about a potential fight between Joshua Boatsy and Dan Aziz. Neither one of them seems to have any particular problem with that. Boatsy is back and we'll be hearing from him shortly. So Boatsy gets it by unanimous decision. We've spoken about it before. You two have sparred. I mean, Dan, you said thousands of rounds. You've known each for a very long time. But could this be a fight that could, could be made maybe in the interim? Or I, I feel definitely Dan, will you? Number two, number one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So our, our rankings are one apart. So if it's made, I don't see why there should be a frown upon it. It's because we're familiar with Dan Aziz, why people say, ah, oh, don't fight Dan, don't fight Dan. If it was some random geezer from Germany or Russia, they'd be like, oh, it's a good fight. But because we're familiar with Dan Aziz, people don't want to give him the credit. He's a good fighter. I didn't rank him, the governing bodies ranked him. No, 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 for sure. But like you said, um, he's up there, man, definitely, man. And it's good to see him. He's got the ball rolling again. And let's see where we could go from there. And I'm sure the main aim is the bid for the world title. And that's, <laughs> that's what he's all called for. Massive signing. Sky Sports is obviously the platform to be. So. I just want to get my hands on the belt. Where's Dan Aziz? I just saw him. You have to pick up Dan. 
Europe's Europe latest champion all the time. Have to big you up. What a performance from Super Dan Aziz! You mentioned British light heavyweight. My name better come up now. I want to put on fights that people will remember. This fight is number one, you're number two. We have some breaking news for now. It's Dan Aziz. He signed inside the contract to face you last week. The fight has been agreed, Dan is now his part, so um, I can only do my part and um, we look forward to the big fight, the big domestic clash. The message is simple to the light heavy contenders. I'm here, I'm back. It's been a lot of time since I've been off, but I'm back now to keep active and most importantly get into big fights. Gladiator sport, gladiator spirit. When the shorts are on, the gloves are on, the bell rings. It's time to fight, man. What a card. What a fight we have before us. Joshua Buatzi, Dan Aziz will put friendship aside in an all-British light heavyweight battle which ranks amongst the best fights to make in all of boxing. But more than anything, this is a true South London battle for supremacy. It's actually less than 10 miles that separate Croydon and Lewisham. 18 months ago, Joshua Buatzi would have been an odds-on betting favourite. But Dan Aziz is the man with the momentum, and he's the man on a roll. This is an elite amateur, an Olympian, against an old-school throwback. A combined record of 38 wins against zero defeats. 18-0 meets 20-0. Two perfect records. But on the morning of October 22nd, one man will be on the brink of a world title shot, and the other dealing with their first professional loss. Why this fight is important, because... We've all got friends in life and again, no secret that Dan is a friend of mine, but what's at stake allows me to put that aside, allows him to put it aside. Um, of course, we're in the sport to look after people who want to look after, but to win more titles as well. So this puts me a step closer. So um, it's, it's right now to me, it's the most important fight of my life. What do you think of... Sorry, Ed, you're, sorry to interrupt you. He... Blimey, you start already, Dan. <laughs> he, he asked, why is it happening now? Oh, oh another right big hand. shot! Beautiful shot from Dan Aziz! Why is it happening? Because you're the guy that I have to get through. It's a final eliminator. If it was anyone else, that would be great. But it happens to be Aziz, someone that I know. So it's got to be you, Dan. Dan Aziz, totally dominant now! And I was calm this morning. Then Dan walked in with war on his hat. I said, blimey, Josh, wake the hell up. So I'm aware that... October 21st, it's going to be war, and um, you guys will be there to witness it. We're in Italia. Ciao, Bella. Look at Ben over there. He's having a whale of a time. Whilst I'm about to get my head caved in, he's just relaxing. <laughs> ben, you're right there. Come on, his, his thing is different. Like, he can, do you know what I mean? He's going to have a limousine pull up. Like, he's going to have a limousine. Oh, when I met Dan Aziz, it was a very different picture to what it was now. I think um, he was living in a council house in uh, South London, and I remember looking at him, and he was just so hungry. He'd not earned much in his career. He'd struggled to get TV opportunities. He, no, through no fault of his own, he'd fought en everyone that was put in front of him, but sometimes you just need that rub of the green. You are now in the presence of a... A sharp start for the man from Lewisham. Beautiful shot from Dan Aziz. I felt like it's either now or never for me, like, I'll be honest with you. When I watch that fight, the finish, I always get like a weird, like, thrill in my body every time. Like, the, the finishing part, like, that's how much it means to me. And Dan Aziz on the verge here of taking him out in the seventh round. He's got to throw something back. And what a performance! from Super Dan Aziz, who becomes the British light heavyweight champion. I'm number one now. I am actually number one. I'm number one. See? You mentioned British light heavyweight. My name better come up now. Four months after Jose Burton, Reese Cartwright. Yeah. Hard night's work, but um, what did you learn from that fight? Always prepare for every scenario, and that's especially what my coach, Buddy McGurk, always tries to employer I'm always like oh yeah he's got a good job we need to work he said nope we cover everything so that you're ready for every type of scenario and Aziz continues to tell has gone in referee can't see it now he stops it Dan Aziz wins and keeps his unbeaten record intact then it was Shaq and Pitters yeah in Liverpool how hard was that fight good work from Aziz and 
Bit of a bust lip from Shaq and Pitters. Clean and competitive, this one. I'll be honest with you, all of them have been hard. Like, all of them have been hard and they've all presented their own problems, do you know what I mean? Which I've had to solve. Um, Shaq and tall, rangy, but can box on the inside. But yeah, I had to do what I had to do to beat him, but I definitely learned things from, from that fight as well. And still the British light heavyweight champion, Super Dan Aziz. Then it was on to Rocky Fielding. Yeah. Um, great atmosphere and another milestone win. Yeah. Uh, pleased with that? Yeah, I was, you know, because he's a good name. Um, he's a former world champion. To beat him, put him on my CV was was very good. It's just a slow, steady beating, isn't it? You know, and he's uh, he's had, he's lost every round. There's been a knockdown. He's getting hit with more and more clean shots. Nigel Travis has got the towel, and in comes the towel. The referee steps in, declaring your winner by TKO. And now the British light heavyweight champion and the Commonwealth light. I've got a new belt, and yeah, that's what matters. And European next, or British defence? I want him to win the European title. I want him to win every title. Southern, English, British, Commonwealth, European. Wow, what a story that will be next. Madame et Monsieur, ladies and gentlemen, Boxer has arrived in Paris. Man, fight week is finally here. So yes. Vibe. We are here in Paris. How are you feeling? Feeling good, you know, something new. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited and just can't wait for Saturday. A ring's a ring, do you know what I mean? Whether it's in Paris, London, Mars, like, it is what it is. It's got to get the job done, regardless. Full house in there, 7,000 fans. If you don't mind going into the lines, then do you? You've spent a career doing that. No, that's it, man. That's what fuels me, gives me that edge and keeps me on my toes. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, good right hand there from Aziz. Put that combination together. And another one from Aziz. Far in real trouble. And oh, what a, that's over. That is over. What a finish. Dan Aziz, take a bow. That was sensational. British title, Commonwealth, European, and now it's the world. Come on, and the new, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm put as easy, like, as easy, like, yeah. <laughs> Damn, we're in Milan. Yeah. Are you settling in firstly? All good. Nice and ready to get a crack in tomorrow. You captured the European title in Paris. You travel abroad as an amateur all the time. Are you happy to be a road warrior? Yeah, yeah, I love it, man. It's good, you know, and, you know, fighting in different countries, different cities, it's just, it's an experience, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? You're meeting different people, eating different foods, you know. McDonald's! I can't be going there after weighing. You know what I mean? When I hang up the gloves, I can say, yeah, I fought in this place, that place, you know what I mean? So, it's good. It's hot. Ain't no stopping Aziz, he's on the move. Yeah, <laughs> actually is it as well. Ain't no stopping Aziz, he's on the move. <laughs> Ain't no stopping Aziz, he's on the move. Who is the playlist? <laughs> it's probably your first year in Italian. No, it's not. <laughs> Italian job done. Now we go and eat some pizza, some pasta, and yeah. <laughs> Is there anything, any truth at all that that you accepted this? That you look at Dan Aziz as a soft touch? That you feel that you're a level above Dan Aziz? He didn't I accept I it. He asked for it. Well, again, this is the narrative that Dan's come with, and there's someone else on this table that I should bring in, but 
I wouldn't no, do that. No, bring him the, in, the, bring him in. The bring bottom in. line is, it doesn't matter because October 21st, we are going to fight. Whether I think he's a soft touch, hard fighter, whatever it is, October 21st, he's going to be across the ring and I know what's going to happen. So that, that's, that's all that matters, Andy. Soft touch or not, it doesn't matter to me. Josh, what was life growing up for you like in Croydon? Life in Croydon, um, let me think. Life in Croydon was, it was fun, you know, but it was a bit dangerous as well. But now I can look back and say it was fun. Got into some stuff, with your friends, your mates, and I remember high school a lot, no responsibilities whatsoever. The homework that they give us back then wasn't serious, you know what I mean? So nah, it, it was fun. Everyone knew everyone as well. You know, so yeah, just I, I had a great time growing up, man. All the time as a kid back in Ghana and even here, when I moved over here, I was fighting all the time. Um, I resorted to fighting all the time because I knew I could fight. And I almost said, oh, let's fight over it then. But then you obviously get in trouble for it. Then I found out this thing called boxing where you're actually allowed to fight. So when I found this out, I said, cool, let's do it. at war with everything, war, war with myself to improve and overcome the hurdles I need to to get through in order to be successful in this fight, at war with the doubters who think I can't do it, at war with a, a, a friend who's in, in front of my, my dreams and aspirations, so yeah, it's just, just war, man. Yeah, I just see an entertaining, brutal fight, um, ultimately with my hand being raised, I have no prediction. You know, just mentioned it's just about the winner, and that's my mindset going into the fight. I just need to be the winner. Do you believe in your heart of hearts that if you land clean, you can knock him out? Yeah, if I land clean on anybody, I can knock him out. What a performance from Super Dan Aziz! So, Dan, we'll start off with life questions. Um, what was life like growing up in Lewisham? Um, what was life? fun <laughs> it was fun you know um it's not like nowadays where everyone's always on their phones and whatnot you used to go outside you know adventure playgrounds football um after school clubs all that kind of stuff you know just being around the neighborhood and stuff yeah man it was fun like um i look back and i'm happy i had i think i had quite a, a eventful childhood just out and about with your mates on the streets, yeah? yeah? Literally, literally. But yeah, um, a lot can happen when you're out and about. Um, and yeah, I'm here now, but I thought it was fun. When we signed Joshua Bawatsi, in my head, it was never, we never even talked about the Danazis fight. They were friends, they, they shared coaches, they've been around each other for a long time, they sparred together. And, and the media seemed to catch wind of it and sort of say, oh, Bawatsi is ease, that must be the reason. And it, it genuinely wasn't. The reaction just from the rumours to this fight has been, has been pretty special to see. But I, I think it just shows what fans really want, especially British fans. They want their big British fighters to be put in and against each other to see who's the best and this is a uh, this is the perfect example for it and uh, credit to both guys because they they both just want the the best fight out there. I like Dan, nice guy, it's just that we know in October we're gonna have to fight. How well do you know each other then like inside from boxing how well do you know him outside of boxing? Um, you know like if I need help with sparring I'll say Dan I need some runs come over I've got pictures of myself with Dan. I've got sparring footage of myself and Dan. I've got pictures for years ago when we sparred. You know, so yeah, you spar a lot of people, but I don't really message them after. But Dan, I'll text him like, all the best with your fight. Hope it goes well. Do your thing. He'll message me. Stuff like that. You know, so we're not like best best friends. But I'd say Dan is my guy. Like Dan's my friend. But again, we know what's at stake now. 
Josh is is a very cool guy, very very cool guy. Like even coming up as a um, as a pro, you know, he had the limelight on him and everything. And I always just be like, oh, come down to the show, like just so like people know, like <laughs> like people are coming, like big people are coming, and he would always do it. Like there's we'll meet up sometimes outside of boxing, like you know, um, he's former coach. Like we're all quite closely knit like do you know what I mean um, but the main thing that's brought us is obviously the boxing so that's the you know main component of our friendship Instagram, told me he was a fighter and uh, where he was from and what I'd be interested in uh, helping him. He has the ability and the talent to become a world champion. You know, um, each fight, you know, we take each fight one fight at a time and we just go day by day as we climb the ladder. But I know Bawatsi can fight. You know I mean? It's not a, you know, it's a tough customer. And, uh, you know, I like Boatze, if you want to know the truth. I think he can really fight. He's very talented. Got to make you got to make it a um, a shootout at the OK Corral. You know, you got to you got to stay in his chest. You you can't stay outside and try to outbox him. He eats you up. What happens in a shootout between Dan Aziz and Jeff? Of course, I got to go with my guy. Yeah, I got to go with Dan in the shootout. He's like Clint Eastwood. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're here to fight, you know. Um, after the fight, we shake hands, probably eat whatever, but we, we understand what's at stake and where it leads to. So I think that being said, both of us are like, all right, cool. If that's what it is, then that's what it is. So let's talk about the fight then. How do you think both your stars will gel on the night? Um, I think with, with, with what we've seen from Dan um, and myself, it will gel. There'll be stages where we will be fighting very close and I think there'll be stages where it will be long range. Yeah, we'll do well, because our sparring is, um, <laughs> it, it's always quite exciting and you know, you'll get people might walk in and they're just looking at the gym and then they'll see us sparring and oh yeah, they just stay there and they'll be watching or whatnot. I think he knows that as well. So that's why he probably thought, you know what, I want to fight, that's going to be exciting. I know Dan's a good dance partner, so yeah, let's get on. I think overall people know these are two fighters that are going to give it everything for those 12 rounds or less. So, yeah, I think um, the, the fans are in for a good fight. Yeah, I'm definitely the underdog, but that doesn't faze me. I'm not, I'm not really fast. Again, I like the, the underdog mentality. Do you know what I mean? Everyone loves an underdog. Every time when I'm watching a fight and, you know, everyone's saying this person is going to lose or not, that's the person I want to win, do you know what I mean? And that can do something, you know, like mentally, spiritually, like, do you know what I mean? I'm not doubting that my hand is not going to be raised. I'm, I'm fully confident of that, you know, but as I always say, there's a price to pay. So the months to come, I'll be paying that price. We had the discussion about where you sort of ranked yourself in the UK. You ranked yourself number one. I'm interested to see, are you still at the same thought? And in terms of, of the wider picture, the world picture, where, where do you see yourself fitting in? She asked, where do you see me fitting in? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, listen, I always say, man, if you ask me, I say number one. If you ask Dan, he's going to say number one. Where do you think Joshua fits in? Uh, he's oh, he's up there, man. So. He's at the <laughs> He's doing a They said the number. number. <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'm just well, here to well, serve well, well, I've got the British crown, so, you know, uh, that, that's, that's just, right. Do you know that's what right. I mean? He's great. So, um, but, I'd like to say, I won that like three, four years ago. Yeah. But Dan, but Dan, do you know why I give you credit? <laughs> With me and Josh, like I've known him from the amateurs. <laughs> so even though he's younger than me, I've always looked up to him because he's always been that good of a boxer. He's always, you know, ABAs, um, going to the Olympics. He's always been the elite of the elite where I was, you know, just, I was struggling to just win, you know, normal club shows and stuff like that. So. 
you know, I'd always spar him, you know, watch what he does, see, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from him, I'll be honest with you, I've learned a lot from him, so I've always, like, looked up to him in a way, and it's, um, it's weird how our careers now, like, because I don't think he's probably ever seen me as a threat, and it's like, we've been that far away, and then it's like, we've just, like, really just come close to each other, like, where, look, he's number one with the WBA, I'm number two. So, yeah, it'll, it, it'll mean a lot. Yeah, it's a huge show. Yeah, a special night, I think, for boxing. Um, a special night for everyone up here. I uh, have to say, the main event, um, just have to credit both guys for taking this fight. I will fight then if there's something at stake. They said, well, it could be a final eliminator for the WBA. I'm not going to say no to it. Dan's not going to say no to it. So it only makes sense. So, but the narrative he's got, that I kept on asking, let's go with that one instead. I couldn't care less because October the 21st, we get to settle it out. So Yeah, no, for sure. It it's just that I don't want you to be ashamed to, you know, say that you ask for me. Like, I'm, I, I believe I'm a, I'm, right, I'm, I'm, I believe about, I'm a worthy contender. How about this, Dan? I ask I'm for you. It's a final contender. eliminator. So I, so I asked to get in a final eliminator. Let's go with that yeah, one too. He won the British title, what, three years ago or whatever, but then what? Do you know what I mean? I'm the British champion now and I'm, Probably by the time it comes to the fight, I would have been British champion for two years. No one's dethroned me. I didn't just pick it up, win my title, then bounce like other champions have done. I've stood there. Anybody who wants to fight, bring it. I won it against a former British champion, defended it against a former world title um, champion, and I, and, I, and I defended it against a, another former British champion. So I ain't had no easy touches. Like It's all yeah, fun and games. Yeah, I won it, whatever. But... I've done my thing too, do you know what I mean? All boxing fans want in this situation is to see the best man win. And I think um, I've said that to both guys. Both of them, you know, are going into a very, very big fight for their careers. There is tension, there's been tension even in making the fight. But may the best man win. This is what boxing is about and both of them will come out of this fight a lot better for it. Two South Londoners who know each other well, really good point in their career, just going at it. Pride, egos, it's all on the lines. So it's definitely my toughest fight today. It's for the final eliminator. This is why we're in this sport, we want to be our champions. In the ring, there's no compassion, not at all. He wants to be the one to derail my career. Number one, number two, fighting each other for that championship belt. He wants it, he's hungry. The winner has got the key to the next level, which is the ultimate level. You know, the path's crossed and we see who comes out on top. I've got to get the job done. I'm not backing down, nor is he. When the best fight the best, no one loses. It's very simple. When the bell goes and the referee says, seconds out, first run, the last thought in my head is, you or him. Points, KO, stoppage, whatever. My good old friend, it's time for you to be a foe.